Hey everyone, Pastor BJ here coming to you from Kirkmont Church. So several years ago, I had the privilege of being able to live in Central Coast, California with about 15 or 20 Iranians who were teaching me how to speak Farsi. I went there with the military as part of my training to become a linguist. Now, one of the things that I learned while I was there is that we Americans are terrible at insulting and cursing people. We usually will just throw a vulgar word at them or we'll tell them to shut up and then that's it. It's sort of the adult equivalent of your big stupid head and that's about it. Well, other cultures around the world are actually really, really good at this and it's almost poetic in how they do it. And one of the best examples of this comes to us from King David in the Psalms. And that's where we're going to find our bizarre verse of the Bible for today. So grab your high octane coffee. Let's make this happen. All right, so before we actually jump into our scripture text today, let me give you two examples that I learned from the Iranians that I lived with that show how much better they are at this than we are. So one of the ways that they will tell people to shut up is they'll say, Zahri Mar, which literally means snake's poison. So if somebody says something, they're lying about you, they're saying something mean, you can just shout back at them, Zahri Mar, snake's poison back at you. Now, I happen to think that's a whole lot better than just shut up. Another example that they will use here is if somebody is saying something insulting to you or if they're saying something that's, you know, very, very false about you and you want to shoot back at them, they'll say, hawk to sat it, which just literally means dirt on your head. Now, the reason they're throwing dirt on your head is because you're dead. This is a way of wishing somebody's death upon them. But again, dirt on your head, isn't that, isn't that a whole lot better than just saying, oh, I hope you die? You see, there's, the, there's a poetic quality to it. Now, we could, we could go on about this for a long time, but we're going to actually turn our attention to King David, who does this as well as anybody else. We're going to be looking at Psalm 109, and this is an example of what's known as an imprecatory psalm. An imprecatory psalm is just simply a place where the psalmist calls curses down upon his enemy's head. It's inviting God to shower his wrath upon his opponent. Now, for many Christians, this really unsettles us a little bit. And we're going to look about why he says what he says. But before we do that, let's turn our attention to our scripture text. Psalm 109, beginning in verse 6, King David says this, Appoint a wicked man against him. Let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is tried, let him come forth guilty. Let his prayer be counted as sin. May his days be few. May another take his office. May his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. May his children wander about and beg, seeking food far from the ruins they inhabit. May the creditor seize all that he has. May strangers plunder the fruits of his toil. Let there be none to extend kindness to him, nor any to pity his fatherless children. May his posterity be cut off. May his name be blotted out in the second generation. May the iniquity of his fathers be remembered before the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. Yikes! All right, we've got to take a deep breath from that right there. Now, one of the first things to take away from this is that this is actually in the Bible. One of the things that I try to tell people about Scripture is that there's this modern phenomenon we've fallen into of sort of the, the idol of niceness. Like, they see the Bible as this, everybody's happy and joyful and nothing ever goes wrong. It's almost like the Barney version of the Bible where I love you, you love me. And... It's not an accurate picture of the Bible. The Bible is full of people saying things that are very hard to other people. Now, yes, there is joy and peace and kindness and celebration. We serve the Prince of Peace. So please understand what I'm saying here. But the Bible is actually full of these kinds of things. Paul anathematizes people. He basically curses them. He uses very strong language against his theological opponents, and 
in the, the book of Revelation, we see the martyrs waiting, saying, when is our martyrdom, when is our blood going to be avenged? And so a big part of understanding scripture is sort of clearing away the facade of everything's always peachy and happy and good. It's clearly not the case, and it's clearly not the case here in the Psalms. Now, the question to ask ourselves here is, why is David doing this? I mean, he's literally asking for his children to become orphans and his wife to become widows. He's just casting all of these horrible, horrible things upon his opponents, and that makes many of us recoil. But here's the, here's the thing. I think there are two very important reasons why David does this. The first is that the ancient Israelites had a much healthier relationship with their emotions than many Americans do. We, we in America are much closer to like the Stoics, the, the sort of the unfeeling, rationalistic thinking philosophers than the ancient Israelites. The ancient Israelites had no problem expressing their emotions. This is why when they repent, they tear their clothes and they put dirt on their head. Uh, you know, they repent in dust and ashes and they wear sackcloth and they're just very public about some of their emotions. And that's part of what's going on here is it's very cathartic to say, all right, Lord, I want my enemy to, to repent. I want my enemy to stop being my enemy. I want to love my enemy the way that Christ, Christ tells us to. But if he's not going to do that, if he's going to continue to harm me and to slander me and to continue to come after me, then God, let your wrath fall upon him. May he get what, get what he deserves. Now, if we read a little farther in this psalm, we really do see the second reason behind this. And so let's pick up our text there. In verse 16, he says, For he did not remember to show kindness, but pursued the poor and needy and the brokenhearted, to put them to death. He loved to curse. Let curses come upon him. He did not delight in blessing. May it be far from him. He clothed himself with cursing as his coat. May it soak into his body like water, like oil into his bones. May it be like a garment that he wraps around him, like a belt that he puts on every day. May this be the reward of my accusers from the Lord, of those who speak evil against my life. All right, so now keep in mind, David's not just grabbing a random stranger on the street here. He is asking God to curse somebody who has oppressed the poor, has hurt the needy, has gone after people, and, and is violent, is wicked, and obviously David would rather this person turn and repent and obey the Lord this is not about revenge, but this is about God calling upon God to say, listen, this guy's doing horrible, horrible things, God. Stop him, whatever you have to do. And if we can add a little bit of a poetic flair in our curses, then so much the better. And so here's what I want to leave you with. There are times and places in Scripture that show us that expressing anger and expressing frustration is perfectly okay. I could point to literally dozens of examples of this throughout Scripture. And there's a cathartic effect to it. Bottling up that anger and just pretending like everything's all well and good is not always the healthiest way to go. But the other part of this, too, is just to realize that God will punish sin. And that if this person is not going to turn away from their wickedness that at some point God will ultimately do what he says he's going to do, which is to punish evildoers. Now, that doesn't necessarily leave us with a great happy feeling at the end of the day, but it does remind us that there are plenty of bizarre verses in the Bible, and this is just another example of that.